I made 10 dresses for 10 chapters in 10 minutes. Damn, maybe the main character has some competition. Before I start this video, I want to say thank you to Trey Coffee for sponsoring it. If you're struggling to find the perfect coffee at the grocery store, Trey solves the problem by connecting you to the best coffees from the nation's top roasters. They match you to your own personal selection of coffee and then conveniently deliver it to you so you don't have to deal with the bare shelves at the grocery stores when people are inevitably stockpiling for the pandemic. The way that Trey works is really simple. First, all you really need to do is take a quiz. This is just a really quick thing where you tell Trey how you like your coffee and then they curate matches that are perfect for you. Then you choose your delivery frequency and it will appear at your doorstep fresh from the roaster. And then you just rate and repeat. You rate your matches so that Trey can continue to delight you with coffees that you'll love. I took the quiz and my results are basically coffees that taste sweet and smooth. So the first one that I got is Sparrow's Coffee. The second one that I got is from Necessary Coffee. And then the last one that I got is from Joe Coffee. I will have a link in my description below where you can get your first bag for 30% off when you sign up. This also includes free shipping. Now let's start with the vlog. Welcome to another vlog where I let a book decide what I would do for the weekend. This time I picked up an Asian YA fantasy called Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim, which is described as Mulan meets Project Runaway. The story is about a girl who disguises herself as a boy and competes to be a tailor for the Imperial Palace. So here is how I attempted to live her life. I read the first chapter and I already have a bunch of ideas for what I'm going to do over the weekend that mostly involve food. <clears throat> but first, let's do an obligatory Airbnb tour. This is a fantasy novel that is obviously a Chinese mythology, so I wanted to rent out a place that would match the environment of the book without actually going to China because of travel restrictions. We gotta be responsible. So I hopped on a train to a nearby city in California and I found an Airbnb that is so perfect for the book. It's literally like I got the book cover and I just pulled it out and threw it all over the interior design. So let me do a bougie montage and show you what I have. This is a two bedroom apartment in Oakland that has hand painted murals and Chinese inspired design throughout the space, which is perfect for this type of story. So here we have the living room space, which is definitely elegant enough to match the palace that she's gonna sneak into the book. It has a super sized French couch, a peony flower arrangement, a restoration 19th century chandelier, an original cast iron fireplace, and a beautiful chinoiserie blue chest. The kitchen has a fine dining table with chinoiserie windows and a lot of nice decorative touches to go along with the theme. These tea sets are porcelain and even the utensils are a special flatware set that was made in East Asia. I love the blues and the golds around the apartment. I think it matches the cover so well. Like even in the first chapter, the main character emphasizes that her favorite color is blue because there's this story in history that she had with her brother where they both really like the color because it reminds them of the sea. So I'm pretty sure the color and the story will be relevant later on in the book. The master bedroom is inspired by the luxury of 1930 French Riviera, so it showcases the coastal palette and blue, white with bursts of gold. There's a hand painted mural on the wall, and there are bright blue chests of drawers that were made in England. And if you were wondering, why did I pick a two bedroom? Cause isn't there just only one of me? Well, I found out from reading the first chapter that the main character has three brothers. Well, past tense because two of them are dead. So now technically she only has one, but that's actually perfect for me because I'm not gonna like invite three guys into an apartment. We gotta actually social distance and be responsible during this pandemic. I don't have any brothers of my own, but I do have a, one of my best friends from college who is in the area. He's like a brother to me. So I invited him over for the night and he's gonna stay over in the second bedroom. The second bedroom, which I'm gonna use to represent the dead brothers also has 
has a bunch of murals of all these trees and birds with a Venetian mirror to reflect the weeping willows. Uh, I think this is great because now we can say RIP to all the dead brothers the main character has now that they're one with the ground and part of nature. So he is coming over in about 20-ish minutes to play the role and that's all I have so far because I've only read the first chapter and this is my first night at this place. So let's just get this weekend started. We started off our first night immersing ourselves into Chinese culture by watching Over the Moon on Netflix. I came into the movie knowing nothing about it, and if you look closely at this clip, you can see me crying my eyes out at this animated kids movie. Which is actually very fitting because in the prologue, the main character talks about how she's been crying and that her eyes are red and raw. On Saturday morning, we had to make an action plan to eat Chinese food and dim sum all day. This was inspired by how the main character and her family live across from a bakery that sold steamed buns and milk bread. She goes into detail about the smell of yeast, sesame seeds, and red bean paste, so we had to make sure to incorporate those ingredients in our orders. We hopped into Brandon's car to head to Chinatown and found a hole in the wall place where we knew we could get authentic dim sum and buy enough for the entire day. to tell you why you're the perfect fit <laughs> to be my brother. Why? Okay, so here's the story. This is a Mulan retelling. The main character had three brothers. Ideally, I would invite three guys to be like my brothers, but here's the thing. I'm waiting for the big reveal. In this story, two of the brothers die. She has only one left, and that's you. Why is that funny? <laughs> Now I gotta figure out what we were talking about. The three brothers. Oh, okay. The main character had three brothers, but then two of them died. Yes, I know that <laughs> She has three brothers, but I only invited you. But it turned out to be perfect because her two brothers died. Oh, okay. And, and now there's only one left. So you were the surviving brother. In the first chapter, like she talks about her brothers and she describes each of them. And what's funny is the description of the brother who survived. What did he know about fighting? Like me, he was lean as a reed, barely strong enough to hold up against the wind. He couldn't buy rice at the market without being swindled. And he always tried to talk his way out of a fight. Do you think that's accurate? I'll fight you. I probably lose in my twiggly stature. <laughs> So the downside of trying to film a reading vlog where I reenact whatever the characters are doing and also read the book for the first time at the same time is that if I'm busy reenacting what the characters are doing, that doesn't give me much time to read the book to figure out what to do next. And that's kind of the dilemma that I'm in right now. Brandon has gone home and I guess that's kind of fitting with the timing because the way that I'm reading it, she's with her brother in the beginning, but then there's an order for her family to send over a tailor to the royal palace so that they can compete to be the next best tailor. Her father is not in good condition, so she decides to disguise herself as her brother instead and go in his place. So that means bye-bye to the family. She is flying solo. The last thing that I left off was just her finally arriving to the palace and finding out that she has a bunch of trials to complete. So what I'm going to do is continue reading and I'll decide what I will do for the rest of my day. I spent my Sunday afternoon reading several chapters for Spin the Dawn to decide what I would do for the day. 
Since the main character arrives at the Imperial Palace, she gets to roam around the area, including a garden full of winding paths and plum and pine trees. I'm a bit limited with outside activities due to it being a pandemic, but conveniently, there was a garden outside my Airbnb, so I got to hang out there while staying socially distanced in my own little corner of the garden. And he was lying by the door With a book, nothing planned The sun's beaming over the hill What's a perfect time It is now Sunday night, the last night of my trip. I read the first 10 chapters of this book already. And I don't know why I didn't expect the book to literally just be about sewing the entire time. Like some part of me was hoping that she would go outside and do some kind of adventure so I could do an adventure. But really once the trials start, she is tasked with making a whole bunch of different clothing for the high lady who's like a really picky fickle bitch. It's literally contest after contest after contest where people get eliminated with each round. The main character is barely even sleeping and barely keeping her shit together as she's trying to make like a shawl or slippers or a dress or whatever. It goes really in depth into the techniques like having to color the fabric and having to sew and tailor it all together. But here's the thing, I know nothing about sewing. I don't know anything about making clothes. Even if I was good at it, I don't have the actual materials with me. So we're gonna have to be a little bit creative here. And I figured, while I am not good at sewing, actual sewing with my hands, and I don't have the materials, what I do have is my laptop and a little bit of graphic design skills. I think what I'm gonna do is Photoshop a bunch of designs for what a dress could look like. And I thought it might be fun to actually take some of the visuals around the Airbnb that I'm staying at and use them as the patterns and the colors for the dresses that I'm gonna make. So I am gonna quickly just take pictures around the apartment and uh, hopefully try to make something out of it. So here's my very scrappy last minute creative getaway. Sunday night in my Minnie Mouse pajamas going around the apartment and taking pictures of spots that I could use as textures for designing my dress. I used all sorts of things like the patterns on the wall, the blankets, the posters, the pillows, and even the plates because you gotta work with what you got. <sighs> okay, that took me like a minute. And now, time to upload the photos and see what we can bullshit out of our asses. dresses for 10 chapters in 10 minutes. Damn, maybe the main character has some competition. I mean, she kind of cheats in the book by having these magical scissors. I am cheating as well by having Photoshop scissors. Plus the time limit is kind of fitting because in the book, she has to make these outfits last minute because the other guys are like total assholes and they sabotage her. Cool, so that concludes my activities for the weekend based on Spin the Dawn. I'm gonna start to go to the bed and then I will head out for tomorrow. And so on Monday morning, I rolled my suitcase out and got on a train to go back home. I got extra reading done on my way back and that was pretty much the end of my weekend. So if you 
made it this far. Thanks for watching. And I will also be doing a giveaway for the Spin the Dawn book. I did have to buy the book for this video, but as some of you know, I'm not really a fan of keeping a whole bunch of books. So I'm going to be giving it away to one lucky viewer. I'll have the form that you can sign out in the description below. I'll choose a random person. So if you are interested in this book, you can go ahead and sign the form. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Go ahead and unsubscribe from my channel. Goodbye. Make your season argue